Hey, what's up guys? John here. We've all seen the infamous video, the Francis Scott Key Bridge being taken down by a vessel. Major collapse of a bridge in Maryland. The Francis Scott Key Bridge plunging into the water overnight after it was hit by a cargo container ship. And this bridge, as it comes down, opinions of millions of Americans are formed about what really happened, what should have happened, all of the problems that are gonna be coming to America, you know, due to this. But what they don't realize is that this one scenario is combined with many other scenarios at the same exact time. For example, the Red Sea is being stopped right now. The Suez Canal, the Panama Canal, global trade, I'm talking 30 plus percent of global trade right now is being disrupted at the same exact time. And so you have to ask yourself, well, what happens if 30% of global trade gets disrupted? Well, prices continue to go up because there's feels like an unlimited amount of money out there chasing a finite amount of goods and services. Well, prices go up, problems come. But on top of this, when you look at what's unfolding with farmers here in America, they're losing more money now than ever in history. It's more expensive for fertilizer, more expensive for tractors, all of this getting more expensive. So as American households are being under attack, so are farmers. And all of this is unfolding at the same exact time. Now in this video, I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you the facts. I'm gonna show you the data to help you and position you you know, for a pretty uncertain world, because without doubt, that's where we are. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube will share this content, to educate the people about what's going on in the US economy, and the world economy. If you'd like to fix your credit, we would love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in a credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for tomorrow. Take a look at this. So this port alone, 52 million. 52 million tons of international cargo, $80 billion, right, in value. It will impact 15,000 jobs directly, 139,000 indirectly, about $3.3 billion in personal income. Now, many people, they say, you know what, this is going to be a really, really bad situation for New York, for, you know, for Baltimore, for Philadelphia, for Boston, you know, for New Jersey, and a lot of these, you know, states that heavily rely on this port, it's going to be really bad for them. But what they're not looking at is this. So this situation, this accident comes as military conflict in the Suez Canal and low water levels in the Panama Canal separately have disrupted global shipping networks in recent weeks. So within weeks, this is all happening, right? Red Sea, they decreased revenue 50%, the Suez Canal, 50%. And so what percent of global trade passed through the Red Sea? 12 to 15%. So just this here, 6% of global trade disrupted, right? Then you start to look at this situation. Crisis at Panama Canal and Suez Canal threaten global shipping. Nearly 20% of global trade goes through those canals and both are in crisis, right? Well, what percent goes through Suez? 12%, right? So you start to add this stuff up and you start to look at this situation. I mean, this is ramping up quickly. January 18th or January 19th, then this, what they're saying here, this is what is most concerning. So they say the water levels, Panama Canal, have reached a critical state and it could have a massive consequence. They said here that it's because it's an El Nino year, forcing cargo ships to find longer routes across the ocean, longer shipping routes, release more carbon, right, into the atmosphere. And so this already, you know, contributes to 3% of, uh, of this, right, according to the UN. And so what they said here is, while isolated extreme weather events have always happened, nearly all scientific community agrees that humans are the one causing this global trend in rising temperatures and extreme weather, right? Other factors making worrying situations, time detailed, the demand for clean drinking water has exploded and the Panama population has grown in the last several decades. Now they say, what can we do to help? And they basically said, switching, switching our energy is the only way that we're gonna be able to, you know, to get this situation behind us. And they say, you know, we could you know, get this electrical system, save up to 90%. Uh, I mean, they even go down cutting on, you know, plastic use, uh, plastic, dirty energy, landfills, uh, plastics, all of this is what they say here in this article is what we can do to offset this situation and to get the Panama Canal back in action. And so when you're looking at this, and then you look at this, September 7th, last year, USDA forecast sharpest decline in U.S. farm income in history. Look at this drop. Look at this. 42 billion decline in U.S. net farm income. 
2022 to 2023, right? So you're going to see this scenario heat up, and it's going to heat up very, very, very quickly this year. 2024 is going to be very, very different than 2023. Now, what they said here is that they can use these vessels, could be rerouted to the West Coast. But what many people do not realize is the West Coast now, as of January 1st, 2024, they've moved forward with new laws on, you know, on uh, trucks and on freight vehicles, these uh, drayage vehicles from the ports into, you know, everyday cities and throughout America. And so despite being two or three times more expensive, electric trucks are less efficient. This is, a, this is someone's opinion. Rather than 15 minutes to fill up, electric trucks take 10 hours to fully charge. And if we have learned anything from California's rolling blackouts is that our power grid isn't, so this is what they're saying, right? Then you see this, these drayage vehicles, all drayage trucks operating in California must have a 2010 model or newer engine, right? So this is 2024 standards. And so every year, these standards are going to continue to move forward. They're going to be phasing out these older vehicles and moving into electric. So if it does take 10 hours or five hours or however many hours it takes to charge these vehicles, and you're going to start seeing a lot of these smaller operators getting pushed out of the business because how many people can go out there and afford to spend several hundred thousand dollars on a new electric truck, right? You're going to see a lot of these operators get pushed out of business. And what I believe you're going to start to see is all of these costs continue to, you know, being pushed onto the consumer. So the regulation requires that manufacturers sell a certain percent of zero emission trucks starting this year. The percentage of zero emission vehicles, ZEVs, must be sold, will gradually increase over time until all new trucks sold by these manufacturers are zero emissions, right, in the next you know, 21 years. So every year it's gonna to continue to move forward. Now, what I see here is I see costs continuing to rise. And then it kind of makes me realize, well, if costs continue to rise, how can CPI, how can inflation go down if your prices are gonna go up, right? And so if inflation doesn't go down and prices go up, will Jerome Powell increase interest rates? Will he, you know, how can he, in, how can he decrease interest rates if everything's going up? He's not going to. For example, this came out, you know, this came out today. CPI inflation will almost surely be above 3% well into mid-year, right? Well, what they said here in Japan raises interest rates first time 17 years. This is a week ago. Then you had Bloomberg. Markets start to speculate if the next Fed move is up, not down. Because the this is what is likely going to be happening. They're going to be increasing interest rates more than likely, not decreasing interest rates. I would be absolutely shocked if they decrease interest rates anytime soon. I'd actually I'd be shocked. Look at this. This came out CBS News. Not only has inflation shown little movement since the bank's last meeting, but the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said there's little chance of a rate cut himself. This is what they're saying. This is, I mean, you look, cbsnews.com. The committee does not expect that it will be appropriate to reduce the target range until it has gained greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably towards 2%. Powell said, following the bank's last meeting, he also reiterated, this is a House Committee on Financial Services appearance in early March. Currently appears that the FOMC members remain more concerned with the risk of inflation reigniting rather than the risk of tightening for too long. And the financial history strongly suggests that they are correct in his position. Now, this is happening. And then they just signed, three days ago, a $1.2 trillion spending bill. So, Think about this, all the money coming into the system, taxes continuing to rise, $5 trillion in new taxes that are being worked on, 100 plus new taxes in total, right, coming. And then, you know, this situation with all of the shipping and distribution that's unfolding around the world, it's gonna to equate to one thing and one thing very, very clearly, that we're walking into a massive rug pull on American consumers, the biggest that we've ever seen. I mean, you have $17 trillion in outstanding consumer debt across credit cards, auto loans, student loans, you have all of these, all of this debt that people locked in, many people locked in at much lower rates and that are, you know, getting much more expensive to service. The job market is starting to soften and problems are probably going to get a lot worse due to all of this unfolding in Suez Canal, Panama Canal, Red Sea. I mean, the, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, all this is happening at the same time. What do you think about this situation, this scenario? Do you think we're going to see more money being put into this system and, uh, and with it, 
you're going to see interest rates you know, stay where they are, uh, very, very, m probably a more likely scenario. Interest rates probably going up in the short term. But then you have to ask yourself, if interest rates go up, what would this mean for commercial real estate? What would this mean for a lot of bank assets? Well, it would mean that commercial real estate values would likely continue to fall. And you have nearly $3 trillion in commercial real estate debt that needs to refinance over the next several years. And so, I mean, the CEO of uh, Starwood Capital said roughly $1 trillion in office building losses will be coming at regional banks this year. Many CEOs are predicting upwards of 500 bank failures that could be incoming. So you start to kind of connect all this. What are you going to see? Big, big problems and big, big opportunities for, uh, for certain players. I personally think we're going to see a scenario where a lot of people are going to be forced to sell if you go through a drive through and it costs $35 or $40 to, uh, you know, to get a single meal. You know, it might sound crazy, but five years ago, if you told someone that it's going to cost $18 for a Big Mac in certain locations, they would have said that's never possible. It's not going to happen. Because back then, five years ago, it was maybe $7, $8 to go through a drive through It doubled, right? What are the odds that maybe it doubles again? Drop below. Let's have a conversation about this. My advice is to position yourself with strong income, cash in the bank, getting out of high interest rate credit card debt. There's a lot of balance transfer offers out there still available. So if you have credit card debt right now that you cannot pay off in full, look into some of these offers. I mean, it's 0% interest for 12 to 24 months. So if you can transfer that balance at 28% to a 0% interest card, and you could pay that off inside of that introductory period, it's gonna be a win-win type of situation for you. You're gonna be able to save more money, you're gonna be able to get out of debt, it's gonna help you. But you need certain credit scores to qualify, usually somewhere in the 740, 750 range. So if you have any credit issues at all, you can be a late payment medical bill, charge off collection, foreclosure, bankruptcy, any issue at all like that, we'd love to help you or give you a free strategy session at the very least at greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video, and I'll catch you next video.